Chapter 121 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter 121 Our God is a Consuming Fire. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 to 29. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not when they refused him that warned them on earth, much more shall not we escape who turn away from him that warneth from heaven whose voice then shook the earth but now he hath promised saying yet once more will i make to tremble not the earth only but also the heaven and this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that have been made that those things which are not shaken may remain wherefore receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken let us have grace, whereby we may offer service well-pleasing to God with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. The writer is full of the danger of their falling short, tarrying under Sinai and perishing there. For the third time, see chapter 2, verse 2, and chapter 10, verse 26, he urges the Hebrews to remember how much more terrible the punishment of sin will be under the new than under the old. The certainty and the sureness of the punishment under the law give us terrible warning of the danger we incur. Greater privileges bring greater responsibility. The neglect of these greater punishment. If they escaped not when they refused him that warned them on earth, much more shall not we escape who turn away from him that warneth from heaven. The terrors of Sinai will be far surpassed by the awful judgment on those who refuse him that speaks from Mount Sion. Mount Sion has its terrors too. Let these, far more terrible than Mount Sinai, rouse us to accept its wonderful blessing. He whose voice then shook the earth hath spoken, yet once more I will make to tremble not the earth only, but the heaven also. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that have been made, that these things which are not shaken may remain. In that final shaking all created things will be removed, that only the things which cannot be shaken, the city that hath foundations, may remain. In that day nothing will stand but that Mount Sion, which shall never be moved, and they that dwell there. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. There is only one thing that cannot be shaken, the kingdom of God, that spiritual world in which his will is done and his love revealed. That kingdom we receive by faith into our hearts. The kingdom of God is within you. And the more our faith knows and owns amid the things that are shaken and shall not remain, the unmovable kingdom, the more will itself become firm and steadfast, and enable us to stand unshaken and immovable too. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace, whereby we may offer service well-pleasing to God, with godly fear and awe. Let us have grace, let us accept and realize and always hold fast the grace promised at the throne of grace, chapter 4, verse 16, for every time of need, whereby we may offer service well-pleasing to God. We have been cleansed by the blood from dead works to serve the living God. Our entrance into the holiest and our drawing nigh was that we might serve him day and night in his temple, serve him so that we obtain the witness that our service is well-pleasing. Nothing less can satisfy either our heart or his heart. But this is what grace will indeed effect. It will not only pardon and not only accept and cover what is defective, it will enable us to offer service well-pleasing to God. Let us have grace and faith for this. Without faith it is impossible to please God. That we may offer service well-pleasing to God with godly fear and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Jesus was heard for his godly fear. Noah was moved with godly fear. The Father of Jesus, the God of Noah, is our God. Surely it becomes us to serve him with godly fear. It will be one of the sure fruits of grace in us. The awful realities of sin and judgment that Noah and Christ had to deal with still exist and surround us. The holiness and the glory of God 
the power and the curse of sin, our own utter weakness and the terrible danger of the multitudes around us, call every Christian to offer his service to God with godly fear and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. The fire and blackness and darkness of Sinai were but shadows. The reality will be seen when God breaks forth in his judgment on those who reject his Son. His holiness is a fire, which, by the eternal law of his nature, must consume all that is evil. His love is a fire, which must burn up and destroy all that hinders or refuses the triumph of love. Fire may be either a blessing or a curse. All depends on my relation to it, whether it meets me as a friend or an enemy. The fire of God, as it comes to purify, to consume the sacrifice and convert it into its own heavenly light nature, to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire, to transform our being into flames of love, bless the man who knows his God as a consuming fire. But woe to him on whom the fire of God descends, as on Sodom and Gomorrah, in wrath and judgment. Oh, that in the fullness of faith all believers might see and fear this impending judgment, and, moved with the compassion of Christ, give themselves to warn men, and snatch them from the fire. For our God is a consuming fire. I know almost nothing that makes one feel his own impotence more than when a sight is given of the approaching fate of so many around us, and it is as if nothing avails to arouse or save them. Our only hope is to place ourselves persistently at his feet who is mighty to save, and wait on him for the fire of his zeal and love to burn within us. Godly Fear and Awe Quote from Trees Planted by the River for as good as God is, so great is he, and as much as it belongeth to his Godhead to be loved, so much it belongeth to his greatness to be dreaded. And this reverent dread is the fairest worship that is in heaven before God's face. And as much as he shall be loved, overpassing that he is now, in so much shall he be dreaded, overpassing that he is now. And well I wot that the Lord has shown me no souls that love him but those that dread him. End of chapter 121